Hello, my name is B. Scott Goralnik, and I am president of B&G Rehab, manufacturer of the Daytona Lumbar Pneumatic Orthosis. I am a certified prosthetist orthotist, and I began my career at the VA Prosthetic Center in New York, where I was a technical assistant to the director, Mr. Anthony Steros. I held that position for nine years, and then I moved down to Daytona Beach to begin my own orthotic prosthetic facility, American Orthotech, which I had for 25 years. During that time span, we had a very large spinal practice, and I was fortunate enough that I was able to see just about every commercially available prefabricated lumbar thoracic brace. Although there's a plethora of very, very fine braces out there, I uh, always knew that there could be some improvement into it. And this idea of the Daytona lumbar orthosis came to me while I was driving an automobile and I had a lumbar car seat. And when I pushed the button, I found that the actual seat expanded and gave some pressure down into the lower lumbar area, and that's how the whole concept of the Daytona lumbar orthosis came about. Most of the braces, again, feel very good and give great support, but they lack the total contact in the lumbar lordotic curve. And what I mean by that is this area right in over here. And although the braces that are available fit very well around the patient, there is that gap, and that's what we were able to achieve with the Daytona lumbar orthosis. We have two models. We have a model that has elastic cinching straps, which we will demonstrate later on in the fitting technique, and the straps itself come out, and once the brace is applied, the elastic straps attach and give support to the patient. Our other model is a single pulley system. The single pulley system is exactly that. You apply the brace and then once you have the brace on, you pull the pulley system and it tightens up. The other features of the brace are the posterior section, which I will start with. We added some struts into the posterior section to give some, some better support. Even though the brace is flexible, once the brace is applied to the patient, it feels very secure. There are two sizes, a wider one and a thinner one, and that depends upon the, the model of the patient, the circumference, and that's how we can get to choose it. Also included, are two rigid anterior front pieces, and these are quite rigid. One is a larger one to match this one, and the other one is a smaller one. You also notice that we have the pre-drilled holes in the anterior plate, and the reason for that is we'll be able to attach a thoracic extension, which I will show you as well. We also have the capability of putting embroidery on the front panel, and this could be for any company, embroidery name or logo, and this is very easy. So opening up the Velcro straps, and the plate is already in here. The other feature about the brace is, on the inside of each brace, there is an area of a pocket, and inside the pocket, there are selected plastic pieces which are going to go inside the pocket. The reason why we did that is because we wanted to get full circumference support for, for the patient. And in addition to that, we were able to get a PDAC letter uh, for reimbursement with an L code of 0637. Now, to get to the brace, on the inside of our liner, which is removed, we have a pocket. And the pocket itself is where our pneumatic bladder is housed. The bladder stays in place. And on the outside, it runs to a tube. 
The tube itself has a little connector to it, and we have a little squeeze bulb. The bulb itself is, has a little dial to it. When you put the dial in a clockwise position, that will put air into the bladder. When you want to dispense the air, you just bring it to the counterclockwise position. And I'll demonstrate and show you how this works. You want to take it, and you don't have to jam the squeeze bulb into it very hard. It's silicone. You just place it in like so, and you will be able to see when I start to pump up the squeeze bulb, the bladder itself is going to start to expand. And you're going to reach a certain point on this where the patient is going to feel that total contact in that lumbar, that lower lumbar area. Once that is done, the patient has the option of two things. The patient can either remove the bowl very easily and keep the tubes like such, or if they feel they may lose the squeeze bulb, we have Velcro on the back of it as well, so that can just stay in place, and this would also attach to the, to the brace itself. The other feature that we have with this is a uh, gel ice pack, and um, this is something, however, we do supply this with each brace, but each patient is going to ask their physician on whether or not this would be applicable for them. Some physicians may not want um, ice um, in the area, but if they say that they do, you put this in a freezer, and then when you wake up next morning or another morning and you've got this little chronic back pain, you just merely lift the pocket out, place your gel pack into it, and then this closes with our Velcro, and then you will see this starting to expand and you'll get just instant relief from it. So these are the features of the brace itself. Um, I will uh, now be demonstrating the actual fitting techniques of both braces. To determine the proper size for your patient, we want to take two measurements. We want to take a measurement at the waist record that, and then we want to take a hip measurement by choke canter and record that. You can then determine the uh, proper brace by our grid, which is located on our website. Once you have determined the proper size brace for your patient, it is time to apply it. You want to first start off with the posterior section to be just about at the top of the buttocks. Then once from there, this strap and the other strap are gonna come around the front of the patient. Once the back is situated, the next thing you want to do is make sure that the anterior plate is midline to the front. Once you do that, you wanna first attach the wide Velcro strap, and then you wanna attach the other strap as well. Now at this point, Either yourself or the patient will be able to tighten up the two front straps to make it snug. Once that's achieved, we have two elastic cinch straps, which I'm going to give to the patient, and it's got a little loop to it. They put their thumb in it, and they're going to just snug up the elastic strap and start to feel some support. Once the patient is fitted, make sure again that the brace is fitted properly and then it is time to put the pneumatic air into it. And I'm using the squeeze bulb that we talked about before. It goes into the silicone connector. Make sure this is in the clockwise position. And you start pumping up the air and ask your patient once they start to feel it, which he does. And that is the total contact that we were talking about. And again, at this point, the patient has an option. You can either leave the bulb on if you decided to in any position because there's Velcro on the back of it, or if the patient does not like the bulb, just remove it and attach the strap. This is our second model of the Daytona Lumbar Pneumatic Orthosis, and this is the one with a single pulley system. So once you have determined your patient's size, 
And again, uh, the sizing chart is on our grid, on our website. This particular brace, unlike the other one, has four sizes. So you want to fit the patient. Again, make sure that the distal portion, the bottom portion, is right about the top of the buttocks. And then the brace is going to come around like so. Once you have correctly fitted the posterior section, it is now time to secure the anterior section. And just like in our other brace, you want to make sure that the anterior plate is midline in the front. You want to then take the strap, attach it, and secure it. Now, unlike the other brace that has the two elastic cinching straps, we have a single pulley system. Now, once the, once the brace is secured to the patient with a single pulley system, the patient is now able, as you can see, to just fit a thumb in there and actually start to pull, and this whole brace comes in very, very neatly. The pulley system itself just stays on with Velcro. Now, in both braces, once the patient is fitted, two things. We recommend very, very strongly that the patient wears a t-shirt or some undergarment underneath the brace for obviously hygienic reasons. The other thing, on both braces, once the brace is actually secured, and again, on this brace, just like the other one, we do have the little squeeze pump, which will fit into that, um, that, that tube. And once the brace is secured and the patient feels comfortable, they can just remove one piece and the whole brace comes off in one complete section. So now, once, when the patient is ready to apply the brace again, the brace is already preset for them. As I mentioned before, on the anterior plates, they are pre-drilled with four holes. And the plate is going to, as I mentioned earlier, fit into this pocket. Once it does, you can attach any thoracic extension that is suitable for the holes being drilled. We kind of li we, we like this thoracic extension because it has a lot of adjustability to it. And once this is fitted to the patient, there are two clips which will clip into place. And this is adjustable with an Allen wrench. This is actually designed for someone with either higher lumbar dysfunctions or thoracic dysfunctions and it's very easy to apply and once you do that this is what the brace is going to look like posteriorly. Uh, what we have done here is we have added some slots right in over here and um, this way you can loop the strap right into it before many of these other um, braces have just velcro t uh, tabs and what happens is after a while the velcro tabs will fly away somewhere. So um, our chief technician has added these slots into this and we can just snug it up and these straps will not go anywhere. And I will say uh, that both braces um, are proudly made in the USA. Thank you.